Hello and welcome back. I'm DMAC and today I'm going to look at picking this little rim cylinder. Um, so this is a Keymark X4 uh, rim cylinder. Um, I think it's got six pins but it's also got a chamber for a seventh. I don't know why it's missing it. Um, I got this one um, in a trade a while ago with uh, Picksmith. I think it's actually a Medico um, but branded as key mark. I don't really know the provenance of it. I'm sure Picksmith will leave me a comment and let me know exactly uh, what that is. It doesn't have the wedge-shaped key pins. It's got six normal uh, pin, it's, it's a pin tumbler, there's six pins, but it's also got um, a little kind of slider. You can just see it there. It looks like a little bit of ward in there on the bottom left of the keyway, um, but that's actually a sprung slider which does come into play. Um, I'm picking this lock today for the uh, Lock Fumbler 100 giveaway. Um, congratulations on that Lock Fumbler, well deserved and a great milestone. I'm sure there'll be many more subs and interesting videos in the future. Um, now to enter his giveaway, he's asked us to give um, a tip about lock, uh, lock sport, lock picking that we've kind of learnt along the way. And I think for me this lock uh, demonstrates it, this cylinder demonstrates it quite well. And my tip is to take things apart. Now I think that can be intimidating for a new picker. Um, you, you know, you're going to get scared of bricking the lock, you get scared of springs flicking off. But if you YouTube, um, I mean, if you were to YouTube uh, Keymark X4, there'd be someone picking this lock and taking it apart, and you can kind of get an idea of the um, uh, the internals. And you can also uh, see what tools are required to do it. There's a few simple tools, but once you get into gutting locks. Um, and as long as you use a shim and you've got a follower that fits, um, they're not too intimidating. And by taking things apart, you can really appreciate how they work. The reason this one's a really good indicator of that is because I really struggled to pick it um, and I couldn't figure it out. Um, so you've got the six pins there and then you've got this little slider. Um, now I assumed, because I've picked other cylinders like the uh, Schlage Everest, where you've got the six pins at the top and you've got a little slider down the bottom very similar but the slider's in the back of the keyway um, and you just you pick the pins as normal and at some point they stop binding and you'll hit that little slider and that pin will you know be binding and you'll set that and then perhaps you'll have to go up to the top ones so in effect it's like a six pin and a seven pin it's like a seven pin cylinder but it's just that the seventh pin is somewhere else rather than being up top of the rest but this one didn't really pick like that and it really confused me and when I get to that stage with a lock I just strip it all apart you know try to examine it try to sort of learn its secrets you now some people might consider that cheating I think new pick new pickers seem to see that as cheating but for me it's just learning and because you learn why you can't uh, defeat that lock and then you learn how to defeat that lock and then the next time you might be up against a, a, a similar lock a similar situation you'll have more tools in your arsenal to kind of get you uh, the open um, that time and you won't necessarily have to take it apart every time but taking things apart certainly helps you to learn um, how a lock works and, and gives you sort of tips on what tools to approach it with um, anyway so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this one in advice and we'll try and get him picked and then we can take him apart and I'll uh, reveal his secrets so we've got him set up in the vice now I'll use top of the keyway and fits <laughs> as well as it can and you can just see that little slider down the bottom, hopefully, a little sprung slider there, which we'll deal with in a minute. So I use pretty light tension on this. There's a small click on three, six, bind in, a little click on six. That's two. Um, I'm not sure what that was, but we kind of dropped into a little bit of a full set there. Checking all those pins. A little bit of counter rotation there, I think that was six. Same on one. All right, I'm not feeling anything else at the top. And that slider still isn't binding, but I think we are at the stage that I want to be at. So 
I'm going to put a second tension wrench in. And I'm going to depress that slider. There we go. So what I did there, a little bit of float picking, I depressed the slider. Um, I, I, was, I, was, I was picking it uh, counterclockwise, so I depressed the slider, let off tension, counter rotated, and then went again. And we got that open. Um, so let's get this stripped down, and I'll show you what I found. I don't know if it's just for this particular lock or with these key mark cylinders in general. Now I don't have a key for this one, so... I don't have a key for it, but um, we are pinned up the top, so I think what I'm going to do is gut it um, through the top. So we're locking back up for now, and then um, let's take all this off the back. I recently got these circlip pliers and they are coming in pretty handy. I seem to have got a couple of locks recently that have these uh, expansion rings on them. Right, we need I think, a little, little Allen key, not that one. Not that one. Are we going to have a funny size Allen key? Or... <coughs> I might be able to use sometimes you can fit a torx bit inside yeah that'll work doesn't fit particularly well but um, works well enough to undo these screws now what I did find in this lock another reason for um, uh, stripping locks down and learning from them is all these master wafers uh, which didn't really, uh, they kind of made the picking easier. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, yeah, they made the picking easier, so I decided to get rid of those. Uh, there we go, we've got a key pin and a standard. Can't remember if I've got any security pins in here actually. Oh yeah. So we've got, got a torpedo pin and a little spool, which makes sense because we got the full sets. Standards in four. Standards in three. Standard in two. Oh, and one more. So it has just slid all the way out. Um, there we go, a little spool. A little spool in one. Yeah, so what I wanted to show you, and the reason I took the lock apart to find this out, was this is a little slider mechanism. Um, let's get you in focus. So yeah, we sort of press down there, that slider springs back. And as that slider springs back, you've got this little pin here, and that sits in this little channel here um, in the top of the uh, lock body there. And that's what prevents it from turning. Um, now, I don't think when you press that slider, difficult to do on camera, yeah, when you press that slider, that pin, you can see, just drops down. But I found that it just, it just doesn't bind. Um, so... Um, is that going to work? So if I press that down, there you go. You can see I'm I'm I'm, I'm turning this cylinder. All that's stopping it is that little pin 
which is sitting just there. And when I press that down, it's not binding, it's just sprung. So that pin, I found it just didn't bind at all. So what I was doing when I was picking it is I was getting to a stage where all of the top pins were picked. This bottom pin wasn't binding and the lock still wasn't opening. And I really didn't understand why that could happen because I thought it was like a Schlage Everest in that that pin would just bind at some point. But as you can see there, um, I'm putting tension on the, on the plug there, pressing that pin down, nice and springy, and nothing's moving at all. So I think that top pin... Let's just take that out again. Just doesn't bind up at all. I don't understand exactly why that would be. Difficult to explore this on camera. Uh, let's grab a pick. Because that spring goes back and that pin goes down, so you would think it would bind. Um, out, see if we can figure out why that would be. Oh, I see. So that's not actually connected. That's the slider there in the keyway. And then we've got this small spring there. And then you've got this little pin, which feels like it's in. Oh, sorry, get your focus. Is independently sprung. So I think that when this pin here is binding um, against. Uh, that little recess there um, in the lock body the slider itself isn't binding against that pin um, and that means that it, it just ends up being really difficult um, to get him open so had i not taken him apart and kind of understood how that worked and then how to defeat it because i think what i did is initially i stripped it all down and then i progressively pinned it but i got to the stage where i had one pin in there um one key pin um, down there and then that slider mechanism and I could pick that pin here it's set um, and then realized that even though I was um, you know pressing down the slider on the bottom the lock still wasn't opening so I realized something was wrong and I think it was at that point that I took all of the pins out um, and just yeah had the had the plug in there and still had the same problem oh I've got that little that's the little pin there which has popped out um, it, but yeah, had, had I not, you know, progressively pinned it or stripped it all down, took it apart, tried to figure out how it worked, I'd never be able to pick it. As you saw there, when I actually picked it, it wasn't that difficult um, in that you've got a normal six pin tumbler um, mechanism at the top. And then I just needed to float pick on that um, on that slider to get him to open. Anyway, um, that's my video for today. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. And congratulations again to uh, Lock Fumbler for his 100 subs. And hopefully my tip of taking stuff apart to understand it um, helps someone else uh, get an open on a lock they're struggling with. Anyway, thanks for watching today. And that's been my video on this uh, Keymark X4. Stay safe.